For the end of Psalm of David, concerning her that inherits. Hearken to my words, O Lord, attend to my cry. Attend to the voice of my supplication, my King and my God. For to thee, O Lord, will I pray. In the morning thou shalt hear my voice. In the morning will I wait upon thee, and will look up. For thou art not a God that desires iniquity, neither shall the worker of wickedness dwell with thee. Neither shall the transgressors continue in thy sight. Thou hatest, O Lord, all them that work iniquity. Thou wilt destroy all that speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloody and deceitful man. But I will enter into thine house in the multitude of thy mercy. I will worship in thy fear towards thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make my way plain before thy face. For there is no truth in their mouth, their heart is vain, their throat is an open sepulchre, with their tongues they have used deceit. Judge them, O God, let them fail of their counsels, cast them out according to the abundance of their ungodliness, for they have provoked thee, O Lord. But let all that trust on thee be glad in thee. They shall exalt forever, and thou shalt dwell among them, and all that love thy name shall rejoice in thee. For thou, Lord, shall bless the righteous. Thou hast compassed us as with a shield of favor. Psalm 5 To the end, for the woman receiving an inheritance, a psalm of David. This is also the way the others translate the title, so it's clear that the divine word gives the name heir in general terms to the church of God, and in particular to the soul wedded to piety. After all, you can hear Christ saying in the sacred Gospels, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And the divinely inspired Paul says the same thing. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, heirs also, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, so that we may be glorified with him. And again, so you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, also of heir of God, through Christ. And you can find many other such things in the divine scripture, by which we will be guided and succeed in grasping the sense. Give ears to my words, O Lord, understand my cry, attend to the sound of my prayer, my King and my God. On all sides the church of God is buffeted by many huge waves, and likewise is each soul that embraces the devout life, but each survives and breasts the billows by constantly invoking the divine aid. This, in fact, is what the inspired words also teach, instructing us how it behooves us to entreat and implore the God and King of all, and teaches us in the words, Give ear to my words, O Lord, understand my cry, attend to the sound of my prayer. But cry is not to be understood as cry, nor ear as ear. The divine scripture customarily speaks of the God of all in rather corporal terms, and gives names to the divine activities from parts of the human body, eyes for sight and ears for hearing, and so on in like manner. Now he calls cry the earnestness of those praying and the zealous supplication of their attitude. Give ear, on the other hand, stands for this, that the words of my prayer reach your ears, listen kindly to my supplication, and carefully attend to the words of my appeal, since I know you are God and King. Because I shall pray to you, O Lord, in the morning you will hear my voice, in the morning I shall plead my case to you, and you will take note of me. That is, Confident that you will accept my supplication at the very break of day, shaking sleep from my eyes, surely I plead my case to a king and a lord, presenting my request to you. Now, it is not the privilege of everyone to say to you, the God of all, I shall plead my case to you, and you will take note of me. Instead, it belongs to those who are emboldened, like the great Elijah, to speak from frankness arising from their way of life. The Lord lives in whose sight I stand here today. Because you are not a God who wills wickedness, the evildoer will not dwell with you, nor the lawless abide before your eyes. You receive my appeals and cast an eye on my supplication, since you forbid all lawlessness and reject completely those living in sin. 
After all, you loathe all those embracing a life of lawlessness. This is what she added, in fact. You hate it, O Lord, all the workers of iniquity. You will destroy all the speakers of falsehood. A man of blood and deceit the Lord loathes. He focuses on the list of vices, highlighting everything opposed to the divine will. He not only forbids wickedness, lawlessness, lies, deceit, and homicide, but also loathes their perpetrators, unwilling as they are to give a thought to repentance. Now he indicates in these people, at any rate, those who have assailed the church at different periods without managing to have their way, in line with the declaration to the contrary of our God and Savior himself. The gates of Hades will not prevail against her, he says, remember, and this is what the psalm also makes clear. But I, in the abundance of your mercy, shall enter your house. I shall bow down towards your holy temple and all of you. In other words, since I enjoy your loving kindness and am protected by your right hand, I offer you constant adoration in the temple dedicated to your glory, enveloped in awe of you, as I always am. I cannot desist from this, you see, trusting as I do in your loving kindness. Give me in your righteousness, O Lord, because of my enemies direct my path before you. Some copies have your path before me. Each has a pious meaning. I mean, if our path is directed before God, we will not experience deception. If God's path is directed before us, we will travel it and run enthusiastically towards it. Accordingly, the one receiving the inheritance asks to be guided by God's righteousness and for her way to be directed and made trouble-free so as to travel easily. Zemachus implied that meaning, for direct, he said, make level. Now we hear Christ himself saying in the words of Isaiah, The uneven ground shall be made level, and the rough ground into smooth ways. And in another psalm, blessed David said, a man's steps are directed by the Lord, and he will greatly delight in his way. Now the words of the one receiving the inheritance are full of humility. She asks that her way be directed, not thanks to her own righteousness, but because of her enemy's addiction to impiety and their unjust assault on her. Then she gives an exposition in detail of their wicked practices. There is no truth in their mouths. They constantly sully their tongue, with falsehoods, she is saying. Their heart is frivolous. Their thinking is in tune with their words. Their mind in harmony with their mouth. Their throat is an open grave. When graves are filled in, they keep the stench within. But when open, they release the awful smell. These people are like that, she is saying, spewing out words redolent of utter impiety and evil smells. Now, by these words, she suggests blasphemy against God and lew and lascivious speech. They deceive with their tongues, judge them, O God. Veiled words are worse than frank ones. By employing deceit, they hatch countless problems for their neighbors. Let them come to grief through their own plotting. By the measure of their own impieties, drive them out. So let them behold before your judgment, O Lord and let them part company with those who plot against us, and learn from experience that they weave spider's webs, and let the penalty fit the crime. Because they have provoked you, O Lord, they have stirred up hostilities against you, conducting a campaign against those dedicated to you. Let all who hope in you and rejoice, they will exalt forever, and you will dwell in them. Now, this will fill with joy those who have found faith in you, and will provide them with everlasting delight. Not you're destroying the others, but you're showing providence. They are confident, you see, that you dwell and walk about within them, and render them hallowed dwelling. Those who love your name will boast of you, because you will bless the righteous, O Lord. In other words, when your servants are regaled with both your blessing and your providence, those who made themselves lovers of your name will glory in your providence, telling of your power. This is also what the blessed Paul says, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. You crowned us as with a shield of approval. The divine scripture calls the favorable will of God approval. This is the meaning of the verse, Lord, you approved of your land, that is, you intended good things for your land. And in blessed Paul, according to the approval of his will, that is, according to his good pleasure. So here he means, your good pleasure and your deep affection and love for us, have proved the shield protective of victory for us and a triumphal wreath. Please consider subscribing to this channel. 
click the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, and leave a comment. This will result in the YouTube algorithm spreading the scripture to a larger audience.